Hello, hello, lovely humans of Earth. It is XFM Friday. Oh, they have my background. <laughs> I love that. Okay, cool. Thank you. I didn't even realize it. Um, damn, I get distracted easy. Anyway, um, yeah. So, love this. Awesome. I'm going to be late for work, but it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to hurry this because if I have anything, it is dedication. So we're going to enjoy this. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to enjoy it properly. And then I'm going to be late for work. But whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have XFM, the Ricky Gervais Show with Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and me, myself, and I, Mandy Kane Lane. And let's do this. Also, thank you very much, Mr. Rusty Dog, for this. These are awesome. And, um... I really like what you did with the picture there. Okay, let's do this. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais. With we're, we're here to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Over the next two hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's Steve Merchant there. Hello there. We're here with our producer here, Carl Pilkington. We'll be talking to Carl a little bit later because um, we've got to have his thoughts on Aesop's fables, continuing the, okay, right. the education of, of Carl. We've got some great music coming up. Bloody good music. A little bit of... Uh, Oh, what have we got? Like Happy Mondays. Daddy Drum Boy. Yeah, all that. Bob Dylan. All sorts. All sorts coming up. Yeah, so, um, Rick, I don't know, I just wanted to bring your attention to this. Uh, well, someone passed this on to me. It's from the uh, Guardian's Media website. There's a sort of website that's dedicated to kind of media information. Is this about our complaint? Well, it, the headline is Comedian Rapped Over Radio Innuendo. Right. Uh, Jessica Hodgson has uh, written the article. Well, are you familiar with this? Have you seen well, this? be careful now because we actually got a complaint. Uh, not people don't know this. We got a complaint upheld. And, um, well, all of this we're, is in, we're very sorry. We didn't we didn't mean to offend, um, and it was a while ago. Uh, so we are going to be very careful. Carl's getting very nervous. We're just going to read out. We're not going to editorialise, Carl. We're just going to read out what the Guardian printed about us. All right? Okay. Okay. Comedian Ricky Gervais has had a dressing down from a broadcasting watchdog for his repeated use of the word cock in a lunchtime radio show. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's what that's it says, fine, Carl. That's what it, I just he's not, not, not going to say it again. News. He's not. Yeah, yeah. Go Imagine on. this is the news yeah. and I'm reading it. Yeah. <laughs> The Broadcasting Standards Commission upheld a complaint against the comedian for coarse sexual innuendo yeah. in the programme on London station XFM. The Commission acknowledged that the presenter's remarks were intended to be humorous, but took the view that the amount and detail of the coarse sexual innuendo had exceeded acceptable boundaries for broadcast, said the BSC. Uh, okay, if he, if he would have said it like two times less, that's what, that was okay, but he just went a little too far. <laughs> sure. BSC in a statement. The complaint objected to a section in the comics Saturday afternoon show when he discussed the different meanings of the word cock. Gervais wondered aloud whether the word was acceptable when discussing birds, but not the male sexual organ. A BSC spokesman said the comedian went on and on about it for nearly five minutes. XFM, a self-styled alternative radio station, said in its defence that its remit was to provide cutting-edge programmes for a youth audience. The station said the programme's brief was to include elements of alternative comedy within certain shows that would not fit within a more mainstream radio station format. In this particular show, it was not the presenter's intention to shock when they took a humorous look at how the English language could be construed in different ways within different contexts. Gervais, whose big break was on Channel 4's 11 o'clock show, has shot to household status through the portrayal of David Brent, the middle manager from hell in BBC Two's cult show, The Office. Just in case you didn't know who I was talking about. Yeah, he's a household bit. name, yeah. but they just thought... You might not have heard of him, but he is a household name. Now, um, that, that's good. That's good reporting, and they're quite right about it. And I just to remind people, it was when Steve said the only um, uh, bird that hasn't got a penis is the swan, and I went on about the male bird being called the cock, but I couldn't use that to mean, and, you know... It was, it was childish, yeah. you know. But what, what annoys me is, I'm sure I've heard things on, like, Radio 1 like that. Oh, what's the, uh, the, uh, what's her name in the morning, Sarah? Uh, Cox. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> as there's a DJ, like, like, Carl, um... Uh, Cox. Yeah, so you've got... <laughs> Carl. What's the matter? I'm just saying. You're just saying... There's, there's a pair of DJs uh, on, yeah, you know... Yeah, but we've done this. And, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? We're just talking there's about... names. They're just saying the names. Now, I love Cox in the morning. You're a big fan, you're a big fan of Cox. Oh. And at night. What's the matter with you? Come on, Carl. Call? All right. We've taken it. We've been... Have you actually been wrapped over this? <laughs> no. I don't know what Have that you means. had a dressing day? No. When did that happen? I don't know. Oh, I was going to tell you. I never got around to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, then. So don't do it again. <laughs> ah, strict little Carl. Pinky Afro on XFM 104.9. <laughs> oh, could, could I just add that in case yes. you don't know what what you know the what frequency, frequency is? is? Yeah, exactly. Uh, why, why, why do they say that? I mean, so, so you know what you listen to. So you go. I'll tell you what. I like that radio station. Yeah. And it was XFM 104.9. Exactly, exactly. I'll listen to that again. You listen to that. You can retune. Yeah. I was wondering actually. Stay like, locked up this end of the <laughs> dial. True enough. 
Um, I was wondering, because, okay. you know, obviously we, we're still trying to campaign to get Carl into air, into the air. Are yeah. they still uh, on that? The oh, my God. Uh, Enterprise. And obviously, the work's been done on that. Don't fret. Don't worry. A lot of people are asking for an update, but, you know, we'll obviously let you know when it's all going to take place. Yeah. But I was wondering These whether... These things take time. Exactly. But I was wondering whether we should also have another kind of campaign, some kind of campaign, maybe one that could involve you, Rick. Because oh. I'm obviously... No, I'm particularly concerned, Carl. I don't know how familiar I like you are with that. this. With Ricky's eating habits. Mm. Because Ugh. he just... He's I've so, he seen eats that so unhealthy. Scene. Oh! <laughs> Time. In that scene, I have no idea what that's from, right? That That's one of those little scenes that always comes up in like reels or whatever. I've seen it so many times. Every time it's there, I, I watch it and I watch it because I, it's just funny. But um, he was in the right if he wants to eat from the kids' menu. Who cares? <laughs> but uh, the ending when he just shoved all the fish sticks in his mouth is, is quite, quite unnecessary. <laughs> but sure, sure. Uh, I can smell the fish sticks from here, too. <laughs> For some reason, one of those smells that's just so particular. Uh, I have no... I, if anybody knows what the hell that's from, I wouldn't mind knowing because, again, I've seen it so many times and it obviously it's something maybe... Well, I don't know about more recent, but... I don't know if that's afterlife or what it was, but something. It was something. No, I, it scares I, I, me. No, I, just he eats so unhealthily. No, I, it scares I, I, me. No, come on, Rick. Don't give no, me I'm this. I'm getting better now. No, you're not getting better. I have a smoothie every day. Yeah, but I've told you before that's largely sugar. No, I, I, I was made... just gonna say, dude, you can make a smoothie out of anything. You can make a smoothie out of cookies and ice cream if you want. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a cough. Uh, you can make a, just like that. That's smoothie doesn't equal healthy. At all. It's like people that'll order just like anything. Just a, a freaking giant quarter pounder Big Mac or whatever with the biggest fries covered in cheddar and bacon. But then they'll have like a diet soda or a mineral water. Yeah, no, dude, that, that's not balance. <laughs> One. I don't care, Rick. That's not enough. It can't counteract, right? This is idea. This is Rick Teresa's <laughs> idea of healthy eating, right? We'll be in the canteen at the BBC. He'll go, I'm going to be eat healthy today, which means he'll have two slices of pizza instead of pizza and chips. Oh. That's basically, the, the, that's his theory, right? <laughs> and it's like, it's, I don't know what, because he can't eat anything which is kind of, which doesn't, is basically doesn't sting the roof of his mouth <laughs> with, with flavour. <laughs> so like, for instance, he, he's always yeah. got a headache, he's always got a headache, I guess, because you don't, you just drink coffee and coke, you never drink water, you, oh, your body is dehydrated, and I said to him, drink a glass of water, no, boring. <laughs> it's boring, boar. <laughs> I don't know if, if we were in the desert, stranded, boring. It's boring, Steve, I'll wait till the next cafe. <laughs> Uh, right, and sometimes oh I'll go, oh, we'll have a, I'll have a salad, right? I mean, he'll get like a feta cheese salad, right? And he'll eat the little bits of feta cheese, leave the salad. <laughs> then he goes downstairs and goes, I'm still hungry. It didn't well, fill me up, that salad. <laughs> I go, no, what didn't fill you up was the 200 milligrams of goat cheese that you ate. <laughs> That's what didn't fill you up. Uh, so I just, this should be a campaign. I don't know whether it, I can observe it, people could sponsor him, something. Just eat healthy, we could do it for some kind of big charity. Fruit. I don't think the fruit's the issue, Rick. I can't if you mash it. I'll, I'll eat anything Rick, I'm not mashed. saying that you don't eat a certain amount of fruit. Ew. I'm saying that everything else you eat is unbalanced and it's just rich with fat and it's awful. Yeah. It's sausages, it's beans. You're such a working class scum, aren't you? <laughs> it's the smell of chip fat. It's all around him. Do you know what I mean? It's ah. like, even when you can't smell it, you know it's there seeping through his veins. Like, I imagine when he was growing up, it was just chip fat it was. in the house. Just a big... It was. All the constantly <laughs> boiling. It always, there was always chips on with everything. Exactly. Yeah, or fried Do you want wheat bits in the morning? Deep fat yeah. fry that. <laughs> It's such scum. And now it's like, oh yeah, my palate, you know, I can't eat anything. It's got no flavour. Everything's got to have cheese on it. Sprinkling Parmesan cheese. More Parmesan cheese. And if someone, like, doesn't give him, like, a whole tub of Parmesan cheese when you're in a restaurant, even though he's ordered, like, a lobster or whatever, <laughs> it's like, he, he sort of has a go at the waiter, or, like, not, not to their face, obviously he's too much of a coward, but he'll say to me, like, he didn't reach and left the cheese. He said, cheat with the cheese. I don't give me any cheese. He just gave you three bucketfuls. Oh, it's a cheese. I should... it's more cheese here. Uh, it's pathetic. Oh, so I just God. think we should do something to because I'm panicked, I'm worried, you well, know, I'm worried I started for your working out a little bit, I sort of work out twice or three times a week. I don't think that's going to counteract it, Rick. And I drink water through the night when I wake up, I'm dehydrated. All right, all right. From all the booze you've just drunk. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I have a smoothie in the morning, don't I? I don't, I, oh, you know what my views are on the smoothies, I don't think that's <laughs> counteracting. You're Andy Smoothie, you are, I, I, you are Andy Smoothie. Because I don't think it's counteracting all the other yeah, I love, I love his idea of balance, as if... <laughs> The other day I actually saw a video of, um, I think it's an Argentinian guy that basically his whole channel on Instagram is about someone will mention like a certain food or a meal or whatever 
he will consume that, find out how many calories are in it, and then he'll run until he burns off all those calories to see how much, uh, how long it would take or how, how much you have to run, right? Obviously, it's just for entertainment purposes because that's not how, that's not how it works. It's not like every time you eat, you have to run that many calories or whatever. But whatever, he kind of does it just, you know, just to put it in, into a different kind of perspective. Because sometimes, you know, you, you grab something and you say, oh, this has a thousand calories. And to a lot of people, that means nothing <laughs> because they have no idea how many calories they're supposed to consume or not or how many calories proper food has. So it's like a whole thing, right? So anyway, this guy does that. And the other day, he ate a McFlurry. <laughs> I think it was a half a kilo type of McFlurry something, just something that's just, it was all ice cream and Oreo and chocolate. It was, it was, it was diabetes in a can, right? And um, he, and I don't know, I don't really get his logic because I think he eats it and then he runs and that's awful. Like I'd be, I'd be dying. That, that would be coming back, right? But sure. Also, I can't run more than a block, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> Anyway, he did that, right? And, he, and then the first video I saw of his was he was burning off a, a gigantic McFlurry thing. Homie had to run for almost four hours straight. <laughs> I don't remember how many kilometers it was, but it was it was basically a whole marathon to just burn off one McFlurry. Again, it wasn't like the normal ones. It was a a beast of a McFlurry thing, but still, ouch. So this kind of balance, like the Ricky just, you know, I, 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 I worked out a little bit or drank, you know, a little bit of water or something like that. That's not, yeah, that's not enough. That's not how that worked. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this smoothie. You are so oh, hardy smoothie. I don't think it's counteracting all the mate. other you problems. You have got a problem. There's nothing wrong with the smoothie. Right, oh. fine. Okay, well, if, you, if, you, if you're happy to carry on as you are. Yeah, go on. Um, Badly Drawn Boy, obviously, has done the soundtrack Loving of this it. new film, uh, About a Boy. Yeah. Okay. Which has got Hugh Grant like in it. Movie. And, obviously, uh, this current single, uh, what's it called, the, the current one? That's out? The Silent Sign, that's currently, obviously, that's being played on XFM. But this is another track from this album, which is the soundtrack. Lots of, kind of, uh, little bits of filler, bits of musical instrumental stuff, but all of it's very nice. This is a cracking tune, track three, Something to Talk About. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, good tune that, I think. I uh, was I was tr gonna try to pay attention to see if I can remember that song from the film, but that, I, that wasn't enough. <laughs> I, I just, I kind of wanted, but nope. Anyway, I really like that movie. It's a good movie. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a good movie. Maybe a little slow, but still fun. It's entertain entertainment value. Sure, it works. Sarah and Lauren have uh, emailed in. They said they wanted something from Elliot Smith or maybe Jimmy Webb. That's actually produced by the producer of Elliot Smith. And Is that a, I haven't brought any Jimmy Webb into that. I'm no, afraid. we'll me play that next time. I'll play some next, yeah, yeah, play yeah, play some next week. That's Badly Drawn Boy, though, from the uh, soundtrack to this film about a boy, and that's called uh, Something to Talk About. We've only got the stuff in the library. Do they want four non-blondes? Because <laughs> we've got that in the library, haven't we? The oh, best of Tony Basil. And we've got um, uh, just about every song that Excess ever recorded. Exactly. We don't play enough Excess. Do I we? don't think we do. Yeah, we? No, I can't yeah. believe it. Uh, um, you know, it's funny. Every time, every time somebody says Four Non Blondes," the only song that comes to mind is "What's Going On." Do they have other songs? <laughs> like, have they? I've never heard any other song, and it's it's one of those songs that every time you hear it, it's it's with the video for some reason. Like, you don't. It's not one of those songs you hear on the radio or something. If 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 it's playing the video somewhere. <laughs> around <laughs> i don't know i've seen that video so many times against my my own will like not well maybe not against my will because i actually you know paid attention but you know what i mean like i wasn't even trying and it was just there but i've never heard another song from four non blondes they are inexistent at least to me xfm 104.9 coming up white van man white yes. van carl white van carl uh i was uh, obviously out with carl last night a lot oh of yeah i realize this because we went out there's uh what's the name of that evening Marketplace, extracurricular. Extracurricular, yeah, various uh, XFM DJs go down there and just 
play an eclectic mix. Just spin some tunes off. Absolutely. And I'm thinking of doing it in a couple of weeks, Rick. And obviously, you know my turntablist skills now are, uh, are yeah. pretty. Yeah. Something <laughs> to behold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. Um, uh, I tell you this: what I did an amazing mix the other day with my friend Dan. We did. Yeah. We spent two and a half hours on it. This is how we spend our evenings now: two and a half hours mixing from a trip hop sort of uh, you know hip hop style beat into uh, Arthur's theme by Christopher Cross. Great. When tune. you get caught between the moon and New Written York. Written by four City. people. Okay. Four people. Backrack. Yeah. Carl Biasaga, Christopher Cross, and a fourth one. Absolutely. Phone in. If you know that. Maybe we should. But um, who, who knows the fourth person credited on that tune? If you have a prize. 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. Also, I want someone else to phone in. I, I, saw, I saw an advert, right? There's a, those are what, toys. I think it must be. Is it because it's uh, Easter holidays or something? Right. And I was today, and there's one of those Transformer type things, and it goes, in its shield. It strikes and then goes into its shield, and it goes into a little pod. And I'm sure it was called a Bolock. <laughs> right. Now, I, I must have misheard it. There's no way you can call a little kid's toy a Bolock. So, can you phone in? I'm, I'm quite willing to be wrong. It'd be very disappointing. But, you know, are people making little Bolocks for kids? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. 700, 800, 1234. And what was the other question? Was there, uh, the other question was who uh, oh, was, was the fourth, fourth person, person who wrote, wrote uh, Arthur's theme? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you get caught between the moon and New York City. <laughs> It's uh, crazy, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. The only thing you can do is fall in love, Carl. But was that with Carl last night? Obviously, party animal. You know, he's hanging. <laughs> the fact that he threw those like little casual dance moves while talking about something—that's great. Oh man, I've I've I've, I've been re- well. See, I say I've been rewatching an idiot abroad, but honestly, I only watched an, ep- an episode and a half. And the first season isn't the best one. It's, it really takes off on the second one. So I, I really got to get back into those because it just, it's my happy place in life. <laughs> you know, with some of my friends. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Carl? It's all right. But uh, you were a bit worried about uh, Jennifer Lopez, weren't you? Yeah. Why? What was the concern? Um, I don't really know what's going on in the pop world. Um, sure. You, you're joking. No. Go on. And um, <laughs> I was there in the toilets, right, and I heard it playing out on the speaker, and I heard the DJ go, uh... There you go, that's uh, Left Eye Lopez there. That's not... And I thought, it's Jennifer Lopez. No, it's the I little one. An, she had some sort of eye injury. <laughs> <laughs> that was but you thought Lopez. he was breaking the news of yeah. Jennifer Lopez losing an eye <laughs> by calling her Left Eye Lopez. Yeah. 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 That's genius. Oh, okay, Don't worry, okay. we put him to... We put, we, we put well. him right, it's okay. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. But you were worried for a while, weren't you? You were anxious for a while. I, I, I had no idea, and the thing is... I heard that on like Thursday, so for like three days I've been thinking. You've been panicking. Why is she called that? Because she changed her name before, hasn't she? To J Lo or something. Yeah. So I thought, you know. Yeah. And she got some people after her. Does she owes someone money. <laughs> Keep changing yeah. her name. That was what by Gabrielle <laughs> and Rise. <laughs> 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 anyway, more music, Rick? Oh, I I'd absolutely love... love that. Just basically fake little filler laugh. Stephen Merchant does the. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like, I, nobody's believing you're actually laughing, but the little sound just adds a little, a little something, a little pizzazz there. I like that. Two. So, yeah, what, what, have got, what have you got lined up there, Carl? Beat a band? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet, 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 we're playing some great music. We're playing some great tunes, aren't we? Absolutely. We're having some great chat. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's carry on. Let's continue. Well, absolutely. Well, obviously, Carl was out with me last night, and he saw that I'm, you know, he knows I'm a ladies' man, and that was obvious. Carl, you could see the vibe around me, couldn't you? Mm. When the, you know, when the chicks were talking to me. Love it. And uh, just what, remembered uh, recently what, when the chicks what, were talking what, to me. What, what chicks, Stephen? Especially, especially in that picture. What, 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 what where, where are the, where are these ladies? <laughs> like it, it's, it looks. Looks a little bit to me like there's quite a, a, a big distance between him and the ladies. <laughs> doesn't mean he doesn't like them. That's a whole different story. And I uh, just re- remembered recently, actually, I was on a train coming back from uh, hometown Bristol. And I was on the train, and uh, this girl walks on, good-looking girl. I thought, hey, uh, a largely empty carriage. I'm thinking, my well, luck's in. You know, because I, I take every opportunity, Carl. That's the thing about me. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't choose. She was a good-looking girl. She sat down. I thought she sat down right near me. I thought, brilliant. As uh, the guy, this guy comes up behind her and says, I think oh, it's probably a boyfriend or something. Sits down next to her, and I listen in on the conversation, you know, because I'm pretending to read. It was very clever. I read the same page for hours. So I was pretending <laughs> to listen. I was listening, but pretending to read. And um, I realised that it's not her boyfriend or anything. It's just some guy she's <coughs> met on the platform. 
And I'm thinking, brilliant. If she's the kind of girl who's just going to start talking to someone, you know, on a platform, on a train, brilliant, I'm going to be in here. Because he was only going one stop. So I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? He'll nick off, you know, I'll get chatting to her, you know, and uh, who knows, I could join the... What's the, is there a train equivalent? The Foot High Club. <laughs> the Foot High Club, brilliant. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm excited, you know, I'm listening in. And, uh, they're talking, it turns out that they're both kind of, uh, graduates who've just finished university, or they're just, they're coming to their finals or something. And they're chatting away, you know, and he's making a couple of witticisms, you know. And she's kind of tittering at his jokes. I'm thinking, well, I'll tell you this, if she's laughing at this kind of material, I am gonna blow her away, you know, with my kind of anecdotes and wry observations, you know. Yeah. It was weak stuff, I've got to be honest. <laughs> really? He was coming out with nothing. He, yeah. he was running on empty, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. And she was loving it. So I'm thinking, brilliant, I'm gonna be right. In here. And then they get moving on to higher break things, you know, and um, I think she was going to study kind of uh, Marxism or, so, or something like that, uh, or communism, something. And uh, she was asking him, you know, by way of conversation, she was asking him what he knew about Marxism, you know. Mm. And he was fumbling for some his vague knowledge of it that he had in his yeah. life. And I'm just that, sat there thinking, yeah, come on, love, in any given capitalist environment, the proletariat will revolt against their oppression. Wow. Like the bourgeoisie, and after a <laughs> brief period of socialist rule, emerges a classless society governed by community corporations. Well, if that sort of thought wouldn't get a woman hot, I don't come know, on, I don't know right? what, what you'd use. If Marx <laughs> and Engels is <laughs> not going to get a woman sweaty down below, <laughs> Uh, and no, nothing no. is. No. My name is. You're just biding fashion. your time. Yeah? Exactly. I yeah, thought, yeah, I'm, yeah, wait, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to go in for the kill any minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um. So anyway. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it, it's, it comes to his stop, right? He gets up. I'm thinking. This. I'm sorry, but sweaty down below just sounds so. Oh. <laughs> Messy. <laughs> Is, this is a piece of cake. And he gets off and off he goes, he walks off. And I'm thinking, brilliant. And I thought, I'll wait, you know, I'll wait till the train's pulled away. I'm not going to leap in straight away. No. And uh, he comes back on the carriage. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. He goes, uh, listen, uh, do you mind if I give you my email address? Oh. Right. Oh. And uh, if you want to get in touch, email me. I'm thinking, come on, you loser. Get off now. Save your face, please, <laughs> yeah. before it's too much. And she accepts the email address because she obviously doesn't want to hurt his feelings, or whatever. I'm thinking, fair enough. She's a good woman. I'm liking her. I'm, yeah. her. I'm thinking, that's my kind of girl. So anyway, um, he gets off. I'm sat there, the train pulls away, I'm thinking, yeah, I'll wait a few minutes, you know, I'll just, you know, give it some time. Her phone rings, it's her friend on the phone. And, uh, she starts saying, and I was listening in, and she was going, uh, yeah, I just met a guy on the train, I'm thinking, yeah, that's true enough. She goes, yeah, he was a uh, good looking guy. I thought you're having a laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Because I was looking at him, and she said, she said to her friend, he looks a bit like tennis player Boris Becker. I thought, well, you, you, you should be so lucky. Frankly, because I saw him, he had awful facial hair, if that's what makes him look like Boris Becker. Terrible okay. little goatee beard, it was laughable. <laughs> I thought, oh, wow. yeah, I don't know, and then she uh, goes, she goes to the thing, and she's like, yeah, I met him, we got chatting and stuff, you know, and I was, and she was going, it's not often that, um, it's not often that you meet someone, you know, generally in life, who's, you know, kind of thoughtful and intelligent and funny. I thought to myself, I'm not even gonna waste my time with you, love. <laughs> frankly, if that's what you thought of him. You just walked yeah. away. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even bother talking to her. No, you were just I didn't above even waste it. my time with her. If she thinks that bloke is not if only she great was looking, funny, but great funny looking. and intelligent, and she got on well, and he was polite, and it was a chance meeting, and he thought, and she, and she thought that you were like a freaky looking dork who didn't exactly. even have the nerve to speak. <laughs> that is what, <laughs> that's what she thinks. Thinking, then she's I don't not, want to know it. I couldn't. Uh, you walked away, and good luck to you. And I have my dignity intact. Yes. And I love when the music just starts randomly because they start getting all riled up and stuff. Um, okay, from the point of view of the woman, first of all, it would have been very weird had Stephen Merchant listened in. Listened in. I don't know. Just, bear with me. To, to, to another guy hitting on her and stuff, leaving successfully, apparently. And then him shooting his shot, it would have been weird, like, you know? It's just like... <laughs> it's a little much, right? Just for being on a train. But also, when two people just kind of click, have that little instant flare chemistry thing, it does not matter what the conversation is about. The other day I saw a, a, a girl that was all nervous. She was like in a supermarket and... I don't know where she was because she spoke English, Spanish, and Korean, and she was chatting up a Chinese guy. It was very weird. <laughs> but anyway, she was like, she was nervous. She started filming herself and stuff because she's like, she was nervous and she was trying to hype herself up because she wanted to go and like just talk to the guy, you know, start that conversation. And uh, she was filming, but she was like filming her feet just like for content or whatever but she she never filled the, the, the guy's face or anything you know respectfully or whatever but she just kind of wanted to, to document how that situation went down right and oh my god it was the most awkward thing ever <laughs> 
she went up to him and started asking him. She's like, hey, do you speak Korean? And he was like, I'm Chinese. And she's like, oh, you're Chinese? So where are you from? <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm from China. <laughs> But there was like this instant chemistry between them. They were all giggly and stuff in the com. Like if you listen in on just the conversation and completely ignore the fact that they were all giggly and shy and stuff, you're like, oh my God, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. This She's tanking so hard, right? But the fact that there was so much like just little giggly chemistry and they were both really shy and stuff, it worked out. He asked her out. <laughs> But conversation doesn't matter. It's just kind of, a, especially like the first conversation. If if the spark is there, it doesn't matter. So Mr. Merch, Smirch, I mean, you know nothing. <laughs> if she already had that kind of, you know, stupid little chemistry with the guy, I, I, you, as, as a second comer, I don't see you having a chance. <laughs> Even if you tried. It would have been mega awkward too. But anyway. That's just my little hot take on that. She's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love also the way he's just kind of Travis, flowers leaning in the window, into XFM the guy being not well, handsome, not this, not that. Time that. When we do White Van Man. Absolutely, with yes. producer Carl. And uh, yes, Carl's gonna also going to be uh, telling us... Uh, his, uh, his slant on fables, on Aesop. Absolutely. Yes, please, um, absolutely. I was out with Carl. I know I shouldn't be. Yeah, well, I, I broke the rule as well. I know, well, I was out with him the night right, before, right. I think. And uh, we were just chatting, and um, as you know, uh, we're, uh, we're going to Edinburgh uh, sure. for a week. Um, yeah, that's all three of us. That's all three of us, yeah. There wasn't, I just wondered for a minute if there was some arrangement you two had made. Like, next no. weekend, just popping out there, seeing the sights. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to do a, a week's broadcasting from the Edinburgh Festival. And, uh, you know, and Carl's going, I bet you lie in, don't you, and all this. And I was going, well, yeah, he's going, well, he wants to be up at half nine and out looking at the sights, you know what God. I mean? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and I said, uh, have you ever had haggis? And he went, it's black pudding in it. I went, no, it's, uh, it's Wait, mint. that's what that looks like? Yeah, yeah, they have that here in, um, you know, the black pudding thing in, in Argentina, but it's not, it's, 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 it's black. <laughs> They call it Marcisha here. That's actually exactly pretty good when it's well done. But it doesn't look like that. That ju that just looks like a, a corn husk leaf thing with some just ground beef inside. Ours is 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 black black. Just black. <laughs> the blackest of blacks. And the inside is pretty freaking dark as well. So interesting. Interesting how with basically the same ingredients. The color comes out so different. All right, cool. Anyway. You went, I like mints. I went, yeah, Sorry, but what? I've had haggis. You went, it's black pudding in it. I went, no, it's, uh, it's mints. You went, I like oh. mints. I went, yeah, but wait, it's mints in a sheep stomach. Sure. Right? And he went, what, I force feed a sheep, then kill it? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, Carl. It makes sense, though, doesn't it? No, it doesn't sure. make sense. What? They force feed a sheep mints and then kill it till its stomach's nice and full. Mints? Like, oh, this one's full, kill it before it starts digesting it. Of course they don't. It's a membrane they've. And the other one he was talking about, like, um, he likes Richmond Park. He goes, I like to see all the deers. I went, it's deers plural, you don't need to say deers. I try and educate whenever I can. What's that one? I said, the deer is already plural. Yeah, deer is yeah. I said, you know, like sheep or, or fish. So you can't say fishes. And, uh, and uh, we were laughing at us. I said, um, do you know the um, plural of uh, mongoose? Because a lot of people think it would be mongoose. It's not. It's mongooses. Do you know what Carl said? Plural of mongoose. Mongoose, yes. Plural of it's, mongoose? It's worth a competition. No, it's not. No. No, go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs> <laughs> His little voice saying that. You can just imagine him all like, mongs. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> no. No, go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs> oh man. Play a record after this white van, man. Do you want to play, uh. Oh, let's play a bit of Dylan, so yeah. I have to um, this is, this black is uh, a, a, and a beautiful is sort of track. Different. Uh, it's uh, uh, just like a woman. Noted. Got it. <laughs> well, I think that's a beautiful record. Uh, it's by Bob Dylan, and it's just like a woman. And. Carl went. He's got his headphones on, so he's speaking a bit loud. Okay. The harmonica's in, playing. In, in, a, in a whiny, <laughs> mank accent, when the harmonica's going, that's an annoying sound, Martin, isn't it? 
<laughs> God. Oh, bless Bob Dylan there. An annoying sound there. Did you hear about... The annoying sound of Bob Dylan, like a <laughs> yeah. new album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just that sort of sound always reminds me of, um, a one-man band. Yeah. Have sure. you heard the story about Leo Sayer with his song, One Man Band? No. Years ago. What, what year was, um... 2001. Oh. <laughs> I'm in the mood for dancing? Uh... What's the song that he did about a one-man band? I'm a one-man band, it was called. Right, yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah, Go on. He did that, one-man band, and he was playing it at the Dominion Theatre. Yeah. And apparently, whenever he played, he, he sort of sang this song, he got the audience involved, and the line in it was, I'm a one-man band. One Nobody man knows band. or understands. Is there anybody there can lend me a hand right. to my one-man band? He said that, and what he used to do, he used to reach out oh, and, yeah. and grab people's hands, and then he'd walk down the middle. <laughs> anyway, he said, well, anyone lend me a hand? And he stuck his hand out. Grabbed like a hand and was walking down. Every look, everyone looked horrified, and some woman who had like a plastic hand it had come off. <laughs> and he was walking down the middle of like Dominion Theatre with his plastic Oops. hand in his hand. That's hilarious. And he said, "Oh, it's a moment I won't forget." <laughs> Probably not. He knows how to tell a story, Leo Sayer. <laughs> <laughs> not really. There is a prank going around of people that will put like a mannequin plastic hand in their sleeve and and play with like their dog. Like, you know, the, the the bigger kind of dogs, kind of Labrador kind, that like to play rough and like biting your hands and just wrestling and whatever. And there's been a trend that, that, that the dog will grab that hand and the, the owner will like pull it out and the dog <laughs> ends up with just a plastic hand in their mouth. Oh my God, some of the dog's faces is hilarious. The confusion. <laughs> Because, like, the owners don't really scream or anything. It's just kind of like, they just slip it out. Like, oops, what happened? Oh, my God. Some of them, are, the reactions are freaking hilarious. That's me. That's traumatizing to a dog. <laughs> but it's freaking funny. All right, well, it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where yes. we ask nice. Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. Exactly. It's um, an article in there where they ask a you know, typical man on the street the, uh, the big questions of the day. Uh, gives them their platform to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out, because we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the K-man, and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your thoughts, please, on Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No, she, uh, she got booed at her, uh, premiere of her, her new film, Britney, okay. because she, uh, she'd left her fans waiting for, like, an hour. Some of them had travelled yeah. up from Bristol and other parts 3, of the country. 3,000 of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just was, went straight into the theatre an hour late, just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even want to shake their hands, sign any autographs. Off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was like, say, outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um. So she did wave. Like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? No, I don't think it was. Uh. <laughs> the lyrics to Stan are coming to me. When Stan was waiting outside for four hours in the cold, and then M just just said no. <laughs> it's all coming back. Um, you know, sometimes they're advised not to interact. Sometimes they don't have time, especially if she was an hour late. Like, I, I, I don't know, but... Fans can be really, really disrespectful with, like, celebrities and stuff, believing that they... I understand the respect of fans because without fans, you know, you wouldn't be famous and all that. But some fans go way overboard expecting... Like, they have that feeling of, oh, you owe me this because I love you. What? <laughs> That's not exactly how that works, but sure, sure. Defense lawyer. <laughs> He's like a defence lawyer, yeah. but who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> so he's like, he's just me. winging it. Judge is first, Judge. Was it raining? No? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm <laughs> so, I was relying on that. Um, <laughs> um, was she running late for the start of the film? They yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, is the it? people are inside. They're not going to start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour mm. and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise. He's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but... It's he's a smaller like, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, an point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there okay. another one? Fair enough. It is not. Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, 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 yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean, <laughs> he, he wouldn't be signing autographs, exactly. It all depends. People are so quick to judge another person on just a moment. 
And y'all gotta understand that everybody has a life. Everybody has bad days and good days and everybody has stuff going on and everybody, exactly. Maybe if she did have more time, she would have. Maybe it was a bad day. Maybe her dog just died and she wasn't feeling it, you know? You, you never know what's happening to an, another human being, right? So people are just so quick to make assumptions also by just a moment in time in their life. Like that moment will brand Britney forever as a bitch with her fans that she doesn't care. Like, nah, dude, it was five minutes she walked past some fans because who knows why, right? I mean, geez, people are just so easy to be self-absorbed in their own life and what they want and they just fail to remember that even celebrities are people and have things going on. <laughs> but you're going to still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, isn't <laughs> there? Next. Next. Uh, what do you make of uh, a New York's a New York's ex police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here. He's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City. He's come over. He said you're going all over the place here. Mm. You need more bobbies on the beat. Not more policemen. More a visible police presence. There was there was something last week about um, some copper in London who was sat on a sat on a bench, yeah. uh, and he was asleep or something. Oh, yeah. okay. And people were like outraged <clears> because like he, he should be looking after you know. England's people not nodding off on a, on a park bench, which is a bit daft because... They were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, he no, should be looking so after England's was this, people. Hey, was this the 16th century you went back to? <laughs> what do you think he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in like a park somewhere, yeah. they, were like, they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure. He'd probably be like undercover. It, if it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there sure. was any sort of... If someone needed help... Mm. And he screamed. He would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah. And, and he might not. He might not have been there at all. So you know, it was. You know, so yeah. He probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Another people, just the cops and and EMTs and all those other, uh, just more people that people forget that they're people too. They have civilian moments and stuff. I've heard stories of of EMTs or ambulance drivers or all those kinds of people, even maybe cops, but that they'll stop for lunch and, and go to a restaurant and eat a, like, just sit down and eat a sandwich and they'll have people coming on like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be, you know, on call if there's an emergency. What if somebody across town needs you? And they're like, bitch, I got my radio right here. If they call, I'll go, man. Like, geez, I need to stop and eat. I'm a person, you know? And just people are so wrong for that. God, that stuff bothers me. And I hear that kind of stuff all the time, too, like, yeah, they need the fuel. Yeah, they need the rest. And 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 they can't do their job properly if they're not fueled or rested, you know? I mean, exactly. If they're if if they work for emergencies, when there's an emergency, they will act, right? But until said emergency comes, they can chill for a minute. Jeez. I I hear that all the time and it's so frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, listening to heart. So you're not concerned the that there's not the, the, the crimes going <laughs> I think up. There's and... enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, you're happy then. Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. What yeah. about the fact that uh, new gambling <laughs> laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit when I when I go on holiday, I like going okay. in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know the. Fruit Machines. Yeah. There's a good one ah. called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, sure. Will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, nor do I. see it happening. No. You've been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs, a, needs a lot of work doing on it. Needs some yeah. cleaning uh, up. No, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling, generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about? Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay, it's really good. good and what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. About about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that. Were they I all had, there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> um, to feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. He had etc. Exactly. Had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on. Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, "So solid poo," and I was walking down the street, and they came towards me, 
Wow. Just about to beat that's me off a great dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing I love that. We're all had, 30 year old. We've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why have I made this so solid crew like wearing a t shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the It dream? was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know I'm not a real psychiatrist, so <laughs> you should... You, know <laughs> I mean? you do know a lot about a lot. Yeah, I do. Thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. That's yeah, so thanks. cute. But you know that... Th I think you might mention before that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. If you don't... But apparently uh, if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew <laughs> in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, no, I thought he was going to say the, the very common, if you die in your dream, you wake up. And, you know, that sounds logical, but that's not true. I've died in dreams before, and I was still there and still dreaming. So that, that's bullshit, okay? I understand how that would be logical, because I died. How am I going to continue dreaming? Nuh-uh. In my case, the times it happened, one time they beat the crap out of me with sticks for some reason. I don't know. I, I don't know what I did. But, um, to the point where they killed me. All right. After I was dead... You kind of just float out and see everything in, you know, third person kind of situation. And I was just lying there, dead. And um, they went on about their day or whatever. I don't know what they were doing, but I didn't wake up. I woke up. You know how dreams kind of transition from very one very weird scenario to the next? And it makes sense in the moment because... You're dreaming, but then when you wake up and remember about it, you're like, how the hell did I go from being on a freaking cotton candy mountain to being in a submarine two seconds later under the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean surrounded by sharks? But in the moment, it totally made sense. And that's just how the, you know, the dream cookie crumbles. But, but... It's like the sneezing with your eyes open thing. Not true. It can be done. But sure. That is true. So you a lot, a lot of people have been joking. Face. Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Uh, finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best oh, Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Oh, it got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it's good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Sure. Yeah. But she did go on a bit. And, you know, I've, I've been in that same sort of position. What? Placing an Oscar? What? Well, I got, um, it, what they used to do at school is, uh, <laughs> okay. if you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. Exactly okay. the same. And I did a month once without having a day off. Sure. And I went up, and I didn't, I didn't do it, make a fuss. But you didn't start it. crying. <laughs> got a play record, mate. Well done, though. Yeah. Were you the first kid in your school to do that? I didn't see I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. Sure. They tried to encourage me. <laughs> it was just for you. Sorry, what? Cool to do that. I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> they mounted an entire ceremony just to encourage you. That's amazing. That is amazing. Okay. <laughs> Wise words there from Bella Sebastian <laughs> on XFM 104.9. Well, that little smirk laugh is great. Rachel, I well, I mean, it is indeed wise words, Rick. I'm worried that people are going to get out of the office now and into the sunshine not be listening to the show. There's always the transistor radio. <laughs> That's true enough. Uh, you think you're going to head to the park, take well, it along. It is time. Keep it low, though. Don't want to irritate other people. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if, if you do want to irritate them, spit on them. It's better. <laughs> exactly. Um, and kick them and throw little rocks. <laughs> exactly. With me, Carl, Kamer and Pilkington, we are now... We're into this, way, way into the second month of the education of Carl. As you know, sure. Carl got one GCSE in history, and E. And uh, we've been uh, we've been cramming, haven't we? Oh, and, Rick, uh, before you mention that, can I on. just say something? Um, obviously, we do always do this thing with the Sun, uh, White Van Man, where we read this thing out from the Sun and query uh, Carl. And I was out with some friends last night, and my friend Dan always listens to the show, and he said, um, Carl, you, you know, you're, I love the bit when you, you answer the questions in the, in the Sun. Why do you have, do you ever know what the questions are before they're asked, or is that your first answer? And uh, Carl said, No, that is it. They don't let me see what the questions are first. They don't show them to me, and I always get re always get really anxious and really get really paranoid. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, have you seen the error there, Carl? Have you seen the mistake you've been? Making, right? You're you worried that you're worried that you didn't get the questions beforehand, right? What? Well, how could you? How, how could, could you, you maybe combat that? Do you think? How, how could you combat that if you're really nervous? Uh, you know, coming maybe you up wanted to, to sort of have some views or ideas well, beforehand. It's 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 your error, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's no. your show. If uh, if you want to like take a chance with me. 
No, 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 no. So it's point is this: that if you're really worried about that, how could you, how could you get hold of those questions? He's in not advance? even getting it. Is there any way you could get hold of those questions in advance? Yeah, but is it always in in today's? <laughs> is it always in Saturdays? Yes. yes. So they don't do that every day of the week. They do, but I always take it from this Saturday. Right, well, yeah, I could, but that would cost me money. I'm not on enough as it is sure. working here on Saturday. <laughs> okay. How much is the sun? Thirty sure. p. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're not made of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, um, it's forty p on a Saturday. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, you were studying Aesop's fables, weren't you, this week? Now, mm. now I, I'm, I'm going to very be very liberal here and let you talk about. It. I'm not. It's not. I'm not a test. I'm not. Hey, man, just like chill out. I'm not this like rigid sort of, you know, uh, boxing society. Just just tell us your views. Just tell us your vibe on Aesop. Tell us something. What have you learned from these fables? He, uh, made a bit of money out of something that's quite simple. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he did make any money out of it. I mean, it, it, you know, I think it was published, like, thousands of years after his death, but go on. Yeah, they're just, yeah. just little stories. I mean, uh, enjoyed them. Yeah. Didn't learn anything from them. Okay. Or, did, or did you, you see? Because it's teaching through sort of like metaphor and analogy, and maybe it Magic. all seeps in and it's all subliminal, and maybe in a way your, no, your it's, subconscious it's is teaching the, you. No, it's silly, Rick. It's silly. If, if, if the stories were done in like a real way, that there's like a, a man and a woman, and, and it's a little story that something happens to them in life, then you learn something. But it's all about, you know, a gorilla and a fox uh, are walking through the woods. How often does that happen? Sure. <laughs> sure. So you're Good saying point. if it was more like if kind of. If it was more true you to You know what life. I absolutely so love you're saying about that picture? That the gorilla has like a gorilla colored fox tail, but not even attached. She just kind of has it in his hand. Ah, oh, the beauty of AI. <laughs> it was more like kind of. If it was more true to life. If it was more like maybe. If it was more like yours. Real yeah. stories like you know a kid on his grifter and a, a magpie picking it, you know pecking at his head, or yeah. two frog boys <laughs> with webbed hands. I mean, if it was real stories from real life that people could believe, yeah, it actually that, happened. Maybe you know it, it would teach us something. But why not do that? Like take a real situation. Say like the So Solid crew guy, yes, going down for carrying a gun. Use that in some way. Do you know what I mean? As a warning, maybe about carrying guns. What about something yeah. like if you carry guns and that is illegal, do you you could have some sort of punishment. Yeah, that's, that's good. good so yeah. that's it doesn't mean, bother yeah. you then that the fact that these fables have been used for many many generations to educate maybe young children or even older people. The fact that they've served a brilliant function and they've become classics that doesn't bother you. You've seen through them. Well, they don't always work. Okay. Uh, when I was out with Rick the other day, he brought one up. Oh, I told him the one about the, uh, the 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 two mice, the industrious mouse who. Um, throughout the summer, he would be storing berries, nuts and berries, and he'd be storing it, and the other ones would just be eating off the trees and running around and having a laugh. And they go, well, you're going to become hungry. And they go, oh, I'll worry about that when it comes to it. And they'd do that, and he'd be storing his nuts and berries, and the autumn came, and the mouse was still playing and not doing anything. And then winter came, and the, and the silly mouse was, like, shivering. And he went and knocked on the, the mouse's door and went, I'm freezing and I'm starving. And the, and the clever mouse said, well, I told you, didn't I? You know, you should have been storing your nuts through winter like I did. Come in and share mine. You know. And, uh, what did you say, Carl? Well, and the moral of that is whatever. Well, uh, uh, yeah, you know, what sort you of, uh, you know, just be careful. Uh, but my thing is that, that it's not very good, because the moral of that is do what you want, and there's always a, a, a do-good or a share there. Yeah, so, that's right, sure. Yeah. But, um, but the way I, w you know, I think, which is more sort of 2002, <laughs> the ending should have been, uh, you know, the guy with all the berries <laughs> should have, like, been like, yeah, no, I'll be all right come the winter. I've got loads of food, I'll be safe. But then, as he's going into his little hut at the beginning of the winter, some sort of bus or something comes and kills him, right. and it's like you should have parted hard because you yeah. might die. <laughs> yeah, enjoy life whilst you've got it. <laughs> that you know what? That's a great point because the whole debate of you know do stuff now to plan for the future to be you know better off in the future is is a it's not a bad thing. And then you have the Oh, live life, party hard, because I might die tomorrow. And and it's it, uh, to me for me, it's the balance between the two. It's not save everything you have for a better tomorrow, because you don't know if that tomorrow is gonna come. So it's enjoy what you got, enjoy life, enjoy it. You know, just just all of it. It's fine. Live it up, but you don't need to just blow everything. Always have a little bit of precaution and planning ahead and stuff because if you just live it up you're never gonna progress and you know you're never gonna have that build up to to better future you know it's it's all just 
living in the moment, blowing all your money, blowing all your nuts and berries and all that. When a harsh winter does come, you're screwed, right? But also, if I find 10 berries, I'm going to save two just in case I need them tomorrow. And I'm going to eat eight berries. You know what I mean? It's the balance between the two. So that that's the way I see it. Yeah. Okay. And if winter comes, just starve to death. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm wondering favorite. if there's a new book here. I really am wondering, <laughs> that's wondering that's if there's a Carl's oh, like. fable. <laughs> he's, he's been coming out with the sum all week. He keeps going, well, that's a fable, isn't it? Yeah. So what's your favourite fable in there? Have you learned anything from this book? Uh, to get, you know, is there one fable you liked? Yeah, I mean, they're, all, like? they're all all right. What did you like? Uh, you've thrown it on me now, then. Didn't you like one about a crab, you said? No, that was the one about messing about on a cliff edge or something. What? Don't what? mess about on a cliff edge. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I, well, there's not many around here, so I didn't take much interest in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? God. Um, of course, I'm doing my best here. I'm you sorry. don't remember yeah, any here's one. Yeah, here's one that was quite nice. Uh, there was a belly, you know, like your stomach. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and it's this belly on a pair of legs. And the legs were saying, I'm more important than you because I, I, carry, I carry you around. And the belly said, yeah, but, I feel you know, you. if it weren't for me, holding all this food... You wouldn't have the energy to walk around. Yeah. Sure. And that means, like, you know... What does that mean, Rather than Carl? working on your own, it's best to work in a team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Good. Well, the one, the one similar to that that I was taught when I was little was... Um, um, I never heard that of, one. Uh, heaven and Hell. And uh, in, it went down to Hell. And in Hell, right, there was these... You know, people had, like, 20-foot-long um, chopsticks. Yeah. And they they would get their food, picture. and they would they couldn't get the chopsticks into the food and get it round their mouth because they were just too long. Right. Sure, right, that was how. And in heaven, they had exactly the same thing, but they were feeding each other. Oh, how what? beautiful! The way he said it, <laughs> he said it like it was, you know, you're supposed to imagine like just sparks and rainbows around him, and just a, a, a white light and his little halo and wings, and they're just feeding each other. <laughs> Okay. Right. You don't like right. Chinese food? Is that what you're <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're concerned is, Carl? No, I'm just... He's wrapping his head around the concept. Well, see, my, the one I remember, I can't remember the ending of it. It's about two nuns in a bath. Yeah, oh, I know. I can't yeah. remember what it is. Yeah, that's that it, yeah. Or is it, are they on a bike? No, they're, 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 that's two adventures. It's the same nuns, <laughs> but they go to all sorts of adventures. They, they're they, normally they, quite they... erotic adventures. <laughs> well, they are. There was one when they're driving down a cobbled street, I remember. <laughs> oh, God. And then there's the other... <laughs> The kind of wave of music is always so good. I'm Ricky with me, Steve Merchant. Hello, Carl. Well, um, Carl, I, I really don't think you got your teeth into the fables, really. I don't think Not you... Really. There wasn't anything to learn. I read a couple. There thought, was yeah, lots to learn. Right. That's the whole put point it down again. There wasn't anything to learn. It was all stuff I knew already. <laughs> but made up with nice little foxes and bears and stuff. So... Yeah. But is that, that one about, like... What does a fox say, That's one we spoke about, like, uh... When the hares are going, we should share all our food. And the lion said, "That's a good argument, but you haven't got it. hasn't got the teeth and claws that we've got. That's lovely, because it's sort of like, you know, that's an in indictment on mm. sort of, you know, you could say it's an anti equality almost. You know, you could get really sort of deep into that. You, you know what I mean? You could. He does no? not know. Big what philosophical I'm... ideas in a nutshell. Not interesting. No. Not really. um, okay. <laughs> Okay, then, well, th you're going to hate this then. I've brought in the concise Oxford Dictionary of Quotations. Now, just look at some of your favourites. I suggest going to straight to things like um, Wilde or uh, Newton or Churchill or um, You're Keats. a big fan of Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, well, he's, he's, he's the boy. Yeah, that, well, okay, let's... Okay, uh, that pic i got to ask, oh, it's gone. That picture, because... Wouldn't... I... Um, my understanding is this way is like a good thing, peace, love, picture, <laughs> you know, just kind of goodwill towards men and all those, you know, positive things. And this way, it's a up yours. <laughs> that was my understanding of that particular gesture. So what's homie doing? <laughs> and he looks quite happy about it, too. <laughs> Jesus. I might be wrong. Oh, well, he's, he's, he's the boy. Yeah, right, okay, let's uh, go through that old crime of... Newton, right. Um, 
Right, here's a famous one, okay? This is Isaac Newton. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Sure. Do you like that one? So there's a meaning in it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually stood on the shoulders of giants. So he's. So remember, he's a he's a, an amazing uh, uh, inventor and mathematician, and he discovered the incredible uh, laws of the universe. And and he's saying, yeah, if, okay. If you, if you want a good view, <laughs> move into a multi-story. <laughs> he's saying, right? He's saying, if I've seen, if I have seen further the people, and he's being modest here, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants to get that view. If it weren't for all the people that have come before him, with their great insight and knowledge, he wouldn't have seen what he's seen. He's ta taken his learners and those people have given well, him just a... say that? He did. Instead of making More up, eloquently. That, that's what I've got a problem with. People <laughs> don't poetry, say what they mean. Poetry, art, and... In yeah. life, though, people never say what they actually mean. And, you know, there's loads of books on it. I don't know. But but the point I is that he's, he's just summarised quite liars? a tricky what? idea. Beautifully it's in the beautiful. That, 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 that's beautiful. That, that's... That... Uh, that gets in things have a <coughs> sorry quotes and poetry and all that most things have a much bigger impact if they are said elegantly and beautifully it just hits deeper and in and, 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 and a more profound way and that's so lost on Carl <laughs> to you much deeper than just the words than just go. the literal words you know what I mean one it, of my it, favorites is from an American novelist and the quote is talking about the subject of fame and being famous sure. fame is a mask that eats into the face don't you okay. think that's amazing meaning well meaning that the fame that fame is something that is artificial that you wear initially you become famous but it's 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 ethereal it's nothing it's intangible it's just an artifice but if you stay famous long enough you begin to think that that mask you're wearing is really your real face so that you begin to you know think that you are more than, than you perhaps are do you see what I mean? In the way that fame and power can corrupt. I know who said that. No, it's an American novelist, I forget his name. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, well, what does it matter to you? Yeah. What's, what, <laughs> okay. what, uh, pick another one, right? Yeah, let's have a look. Um, oh, Bernard Shaw, he's no slouch. I let's think maybe when you read, when you take this book of quotations home, Carl, you should maybe just draw up maybe a list of three or four of your favourites yeah, and, and tell Shaw, them next week. I want you Shaw, um, Wilde, uh, I look at Shakespeare as well, you know, he's... Uh, yeah. what, you, are you a fan of Shakespeare? No. Go on, what's your, what's your problem with it? Just um, the way they speak, can't, sure. I can't follow it. Sure, yeah. okay, understandable. Yeah. Do you like West Side Story? It's, it's really old <coughs> as well. I can't relate to it. It's just like <coughs> years and years ago, isn't it? Sure. That's why I like Churchill, because nineteen forties. Yeah. Not long Look ago. at this. Look at this. This is uh, sure. Okay. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Sure. Uh, again, uh, how would you see that? In your little... Well, that's your, that's one homework then. I'll mark that. That's your homework. you got to work that out. You've got to tell me what you think of it. S say again. Don't ask Suzanne. Say it's again. there. All right, all right. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Okay? Take that home with you. And we'll be um, hearing Carl come up with some amazing quotations next week. Homework. Yeah, pick out your favourites. Sorry. Now I'd like to uh, play a song for the lovers while he's thinking. Sure. No, I don't think we've got the lovers lined up. Oh, uh, what have we got? A bit of hip-hop. It's hip-hop hooray. Oh, is it? Yeah, everyone's a big fan. <laughs> now, I played something from this last week. It's uh, this new album from Nerd, In Search Of. It's been uh, re-recorded by the lads. I don't know why. And um, anyway, it's particularly good. We played last week, Things Are Getting Better. This is the one we have played in the past, actually. Bobby James. <laughs> okay. Sure. Doves. There goes the fear on XFM 104.9. Well, just read that book anyway. I'll just, I'll just, can I just say, uh, th this is one of a, a beautiful, is Keats, right? Um, what do you think of this? A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. See, this, this is just like how it was at school now. I've, uh, the last couple of weeks have been quite interested in what you've been giving me. Now it's, it's really like... Okay. I really don't care. Now this. Th what about this? Now no, I, I, not, I, I, not, not I did philosophy and. I did. What a liar! He was never interested in anything since what was the first one? Rasputin. He was already like, mm, all right. And then the second week was changed. He was like, ugh, fine. And then it was Hitler. He was like, oh god. And then <laughs> like every time it's just ugh, liar. The philosophy is obviously the you know the quest for knowledge. And it's, you know it's a. Look, listen to this though. This is what Keats came out with. Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Don't be constrained yeah. by what's, you know, dream a little. You know what I mean? <coughs> Just go beyond. 
I don't agree with it, but it's a lovely, it's a lovely bit of poetry. Yes. Yeah? So you're gonna read that for me, are you, Carl? Yeah? Yeah. Just the pick out five like of your favourites. Yeah. yeah the ones that mean something to it. you. And then ne next week I'll bring you in pictures of animals. Brilliant. Okay? We'll do it. Okay, and some sweets. <laughs> Rick, um, I've had a star. word with some of the uh, the top brass here. Or they had a word with me in the corridor. If you remember Did when they we started- say, what, who are you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, no, they said they were saying that, you know, obviously enjoy the show, they love it. And, um, they're just worried though that in the early days when we started the show, remember we were a lot more informative. We used to do the film reviews, yeah. there was things yes. like the gig guide and stuff sure, like that, sure, sure, sure. which yeah. we've kind of let yeah, go by the, the, the about way. Sorry, the, yeah, so they want us to bring that. Probably well, exactly. Sorry, no, 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 no. The gig guide. I was worried that, funnily enough, the XFM gig guide, uh, uh, gig guide does not include some of the biggest bands in the world, okay, all right. or, or some of the best venues. That's what worried me. Don't, look, Rick, but just do what you're told. Right? Oh, There's, is it the gig, There's the gig guide. It's is got it got big, better? It's got a lot Am of I going to be impressed? On. You're going to love the gig guide. I need a bet. If this is going to be pretty well, impressive, let's, do the, let's play the proper jingle. Okay. Okay. Ah, tonight, uh, if you want to, oh, hey, if you want to see these two bands in a small venue, get down to the Metro Bar on small Oxford Street. Venue. Doors are at 8 p.m. and tickets are only six quid to see sure. Ten Benson and Beach Buggy. Ah, ah, All right? Now, if you missed Longwave supporting the Strokes of Brixton Academy last night, you can catch them headlining Casino Royale at the Monarch. Rick, are I you? missed them last night. How much will I be paying for that? You'll only be paying five pounds, right? But listen, they're also supported by Shelby and I Remember Nothing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, now, people know about the Brixton Academy, <laughs> but a little known uh, venue in Brixton is the Windmill. <laughs> okay. And you're, you're going to see three great bands there tonight. Guapo, <laughs> okay. Plonkez, and Mechanical Beetles Never Quite Warm. <laughs> so, uh, Orange Goblin and Grand Magus play the garage, and, uh, well, the, the different oh, was he's it? So Dyke and Back and Sudden play the Rotar Sessions at Nine Hills Arts Club. So that's the gig guy, the next <laughs> film. <laughs> what a load of rubbish. <laughs> I mean, switch off the jingle. Look at this. We've discussed this before, haven't we? Names for bands that will never be anything. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mechanical Beetles, never quite warm. <laughs> that looks so cool. Please anyway. welcome to the stage oh, Plankwev. <laughs> please welcome to the stage Orange Goblin. That one works. Oh, goodness me. Look oh, at this. Oh, God. Orange Goblin. Uh, Orange Goblin. Goblin. <laughs> so what's, rubbish. His, what's his name? Uh, um, got a fake town, hasn't he? That one of his mar com, uh, supermarket suite. What's his name? Dale. Dale Winton. Dale Winton, yeah. Supporting REM. I remember nothing. <laughs> Never gonna happen. <laughs> Just, I mean, please. You're come so on, people. Too. Hey, here's a band that plays big venues. Doesn't make them better, sure. But this is Radiohead. This is uh, Song for the Lovers. And Let there Down off OK Computer. This is beautiful. So, see, a thing of beauty. It's a joy forever. Does, doesn't that move you at all, Carl? Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Nope. There was an old lady from Ealing <laughs> who was putting... <laughs> Radiohead, let down off OK Computer. Apparently we missed, uh, we missed a gig on that gig guide. Uh, drip Feed are playing the Rock Garden on the 21st of this month. Excellent. So uh, the lead singer just called in for that. He also uh, left a quote with me, uh, apparently, uh, uh, Coleridge said of Keats, wasn't it? He's uh, like an archangel, slightly damaged. Rick, I'm worried we're getting a little bit highbrow. Do you reckon? Have you got any knob gags you could do quickly? Because I'm just thinking we're switching. There's a lot of people are going to be turning off. Um, I uh, mean, currently, currently on Capital FM, Chris Tarrant and Dr. Neil Fox together at last. The partnership at last, we've always they wanted. said it would never happen. Do you know what I'd like to see together? Uh, that breakfast DJ, Sarah Cox. And <laughs> who's the, the uh, dance? <laughs> just, um, Carl. Oh, well. Carl. He Carl said Cox. it like Cox. Cox. <laughs> Carl, please, why are you getting suddenly saying these rude words? You've been reprimanded yeah, once, don't Carl, say please. that, and don't say it so aggressively, because it sounds like you're saying cocks aggressively. Come on, we've been reprimanded. Yeah. All right? That, just don't use language like oh, that. It's okay, annoying man. me. Why is it annoying you? Because We're talking about DJs, that's yeah. their names. Well, you, you try to be clever. I, I hardly think that's me, clever. You've given me a <laughs> Yeah, if that's my best attempt at being clever. That sounds like a guy called Richard Hardy. Hardy. This week. Like, okay, he's Hardy. really upset about really this. Upset. He was looking forward to st uh, an uh, animal fat. You said you were going to bring in that big book, 500 It's so... It, I got it off one of those bargain books. Oh, I thought it would be easy, right? Cause it's, it's, but it's too elementary. No, but that's more useful than that to me. But it's things like... It's things like the tortoise has a shell to protect it. That's Perfect. good. Perfect. That's good, there you <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, but you know... Because you thought it was there just to be painted on the tip. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, have you ever have you ever peeled a tortoise? They fly. They go about 400 miles an hour. It's to weigh them down because they're the fastest lizards on <laughs> the man. Exactly. Honestly, they run so fast they can go through walls. Yeah. And so that they. That, that their shells put on them in the hospital, in the maternity ward, <laughs> at a very early age, just slow them down. You let a tortoise uh, uh, shout and you won't catch it. Steve, do you know that turtles can breathe out of the bum? Turtles can breathe out of their bum? What? I know someone who can talk out of it, but <laughs> Sidra knows that. Okay. That's, uh, that Where'd you, well, tell us I, I, knows I, that. I don't have time to read all of this. That's, uh, that you, you, well, late. All right. Tell us about that. Tell us about that now. Well, they that's, do that. it, that's all I know. They get, when they go swimming, they can sort of, uh, <laughs> if they don't want to get their, stick their head out, they can just <laughs> stick their arse out. Yeah. Why, why don't they want to stick their head out? I don't know. Just uh, if, I, I don't know, maybe they don't need, they need to be looking for food under the water. Yeah. So, and if they stick their head up to get some air, they might miss something. Wouldn't it be easier to have an arse that could, um, forage for food? So they could sort of like lounge in the pool like a jacuzzi and they're looking around going, all right, Ricky always hello, has to make it hiya. Gross. And meanwhile it's arse, it's like munching. Grass. Sure. Yeah. Bad Wouldn't breath. that be easier? Oh, bad breath. <laughs> 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 wow. Well, I wish I understood what that meant. Um, yeah. In all this hilarity, okay. well, is it? But in all that hi hi this hilarity, I'm worried we've um, forgotten the true meaning of Easter. Uh, <laughs> no, come on, Rick. Come on. Oh, come on. You're just, you know, you're being frothy and lightweight and a little bit rude. But you yeah. know, it is. It's a time for remembering and chocolate that um, someone did die for their our sins. Yeah. So can we just be, be ashamed to disappoint him? Yeah. Can we just think about? That and just take a moment just to consider that. Yeah, can we do that? All right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You understand the true meaning of Easter. It's not just about eggs and bunnies. You uh, understand yeah. it, don't you? Yeah. What's Happy your memory of it? Years. What's your understanding of it, Carl? Did, what Easter. You, What's it all about for you? What do you have to do at school? Do you have to do anything at school? Uh, I think we got a long weekend off. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. What did they call that weekend? Easter weekend. There you Brilliant. Go. Okay. Brilliant. And what was the reason for that? <clears throat> what? Why did we have Easter weekend off? Jesus. Yeah, but what did he do? He, uh, he put himself on the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, he sure. didn't put himself on no. There you go. Does it mean anything to you? Are you moved by that story? Again, too long ago for me to sort of... <laughs> okay. Um, sure. you know, to worry about to it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if there'd have been an Anderson shouter involved... Yeah. ...you'd have been, you'd have been there, wouldn't you? You're not well today, are you, Carl? Not at all. Don't know no. what's wrong with me today. Sure. You performed great though. This was awesome and entertaining. You know, Steve, uh, like, you know, he's always on the go at me. Last night when we were out with his mates, yeah. they said he was a bit of a hypochondriac himself. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? What were they saying? He said, uh, they said, I said, Steve's told me he's not feeling well. You know, is he all right? You live with him? He said, oh, I don't worry about that. Really? So he's always saying that, and I said, that's a bit of a fable. I said, cry wolf. Ah, sure. <laughs> yeah, one day you say I've got a temperature, and they go, "Well, oh, I've had the lemsip," and he'll die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've learnt my lesson. There you go. Yeah. Th there was something about cry. The boy cried wolf. <coughs> it, the, uh, the moral can surely only be never tell the same lie twice. You know what I mean? Because if he'd have that... come up with a different one, he'd have kept him going all year. I reckon. I, I <laughs> That's don't a good reckon. Point. Yeah. I never thought of it like that before. What are we gonna play? A final tune? Have we? What we got? We got? We got a bit of swayed, haven't we? Well, it depends. Let's get a bit of swayed in and song for the ladies. Let's go we, over. Can't What's the what football? It's only the football. Can't, don't say that. Yeah, give us your song. What's for the yours. football? What's the match? What's this? A lot of, uh, the gig guide oh. is long wave and guapo and plankers. What's this? What's the football match? Well. Talk, what are the football matches XFM covering? I don't know. What, what Come on. What would you like? Track, track, track eight. The Bolton versus Barnsley. <laughs> you don't like sport though, do you? A lot <laughs> well, of people do. Huh? God, do. I'm so late for work. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, we're going for uh, it's a bit of Stevie Wonder, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think it's quite a short song, though, Carl. Are you going to? No, that's cool. Yes, yeah, cool. it's okay. You're okay, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is the final song. This it? lost a lot of energy. This show. This is it. I mean, the first hour and forty minutes, I think, was dynamite. I think the last ten have been uh, but flagging. But I mean, Carl, he was he was full of life. You know, he was answering he the was. questions and stuff, and now you. And he got, he got fed up. We got fed up with the quotations. He didn't like us mentioning um, uh, Radio One DJs such as Sarah Cox and Carl. Oh, Cox. Yeah, he didn't like that. <laughs> Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Sorry everyone. Okay, thank you so much guys. I gotta go, I gotta go, I got so freaking late. Oh my god! This is extremely fun. I love you guys. Thank you. See you soon. Bye, toodles! <laughs>